school I've seen with the iPads and the personal response systems, smart boards and everything else. Um, I think in some regards it's made kids lazier because they don't want to, they just want everything instantaneous. Um, you know I do a lot of stuff with technology but then if it's not something that kids can do you know, in 30 minutes they're annoyed with you know, having to actually put time into it. Um, but it's the way things are going, so we might as well embrace it or get out of the way. <laughs> well, the fact they can put, you can put a VHS in there and it comes out. Get that you could off. do that if it was a regular screen. What are you doing? I won't use it without your permission. Good, because you don't have my permission. I know. <laughs> yeah, we should. We should be doing stuff like they're doing in other places where the teachers actually text kids. Mm -hmm. Or, or give them a message, or they're more aware of what their assignments are because they're constantly told. Mm -hmm. There ought to be those things where, you know, how kids hate to take notes, but they don't mind doing this, so there mm -hmm. ought to be a, maybe not a laptop for each kid, but some kind of... Typing device. Uh, yeah, some kind of something where they could do it like in a more notebook. fun way, yeah. yeah. You can always assume that you're going to have tools. I mean, you're going to have to know how the things work. So, like, mathematics, it's faster to do 2 plus 2 in your head than mm -hmm. it is to pull out your phone, find the app, click on calculator, go 2 plus 2, or first clear everything out that was there, mm -hmm. 2 plus 2, oh, it equals 4. There's some more advanced stuff, like in the graphics classes. I don't have you guys lay out an actual layout by hand, because slim to no one does it. They do it all on the computer. Assumption uh, in, in this little documentary that we're doing is the idea that schools are reluctant to adopt technology. For the most part, yes. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree with that premise. Uh, well, I feel like uh, we use technology the same way we use a desk or the pool uh, or anything uh, for the advancement of student learning and the promotion of, uh, sort of intellectual enlightenment. We have teachers who in their personal lives are early adopters of technology and I think that that manifests itself in their classrooms as well, right? Uh, and so some of these people tend to be um, sort of the uh, technological vanguard, so to speak, uh, who are, you know, they, they bring these things to bear for their students as well. Um, and, you know, in, in that respect, every classroom is a laboratory uh, where, you know, people say, hey, what, this is what works for me, this is what I'm doing, and oftentimes that knowledge uh, is disseminated among colleagues. Right. I'm glad I didn't fall for that whole laser disc phenomenon that we were having, you know, back in the 19, what, was the 1980s. Oh god, they were huge. Uh, but it was the latest, greatest thing. Cell phone? Yes. Um, recently I had, I had one of those pay-as-you-go phones, 
Mm -hmm. Like, it was real weird. In my high school, we barely ever had phones. So when we have cell phones, like you guys do now, everyone has them. When I was a kid, you didn't have cell phones. Right. So only every once in a while, people had them. So as, I'm, as, as I grew through the, through the high school, I didn't really have any. And then uh, we moved on through college. I had, like, a track phone, you know, mm -hmm. so pay as you go. And I would only call home, like, on my way home, like, hey, I'm coming home now. Uh, only recently I picked up a cell phone because my wife wanted me to have one for uh, emergencies. I've got kind of, well, I, I always believe that we should be, how, how would this interview go if suddenly I grabbed my handheld and started talking? I, I just sort of have a belief that <laughs> like we, should, we should be, it would we should, our don't you think? Uh, I, I just feel like people should be where they are. You can be surrounded by people and still feel incredibly alone and isolated, can't you? I mean, have you ever been sitting in a room full of people? I work with people all day long. Um, and somehow you still find your way to feeling isolated. We, we should stick to a traditional mode of understanding and learning. And I'm, I'm dogmatic if I say, hey, let's let technology do all of these things. Uh, I might be fashionable. Uh, I guess my critical question is, in, in either world, uh, what is your role as the intellectual? What is your role as the learner? Uh, how does technology in this new world affect uh, your obligation as a learner and an intellectual? Are you uh, more or less psychologically, intellectually independent? In the old world, are you more, do you understand more or less? Um, so uh, if, if, if you are an expert at using one particular piece of technology and that technology changes, mm -hmm. you then have to change with it and all the knowledge that you acquired is now, um, or at least in theory, uh, becomes obsolete along with the technology. So at the root of it all, there has to be some quantifiable or, or rather articulated essential human skills that have to be acquired along the way. And I'm not sure how technology plays into that, but I know that you have to have understanding first and technology second.